The big development that I see is that the yield on the 10-year Japanese government bond has suddenly shot through the ceiling imposed by the Bank of Japan at half percent. It's now trading at 0.537. Now that may not, might not seem like a lot, but um, the problem that they have is that the Bank of Japan is so far behind the curve. I mean, they've got inflation, which is um, the core index hit a 41-year record in February. Um, inflation rose to 4.3% um, in February, which is the highest since 1981. So, you know, they've got an inflation problem. Now, it's, you know, not as dramatic as 6.2 or whatever it is last seen in, in uh, the United States, but this is definitely a problem. They have got um, negative interest rates at the short end. I mean, looking at my screen here, one month Japanese bonds yield minus 0.18. They haven't moved at all. All they've done is they've sort of just let the long end of the yield curve just rise a little bit. But their problem is that they're trying to suppress it by cornering the market. I mean, they've bought over half all 10-year JGBs in existence. What's happening is that um, the Bank of Japan um, has got itself an enormous headache because if it lets um, yields run to where they should be, which in my estimation is somewhere between four and a half and five percent, the whole of the Japanese banking system is bust. Because on you know on on a ten-year uh, bond that would lose roughly thirty percent of the value. So, you know this is this is serious stuff. I mean it really is. Um, and the Bank of Japan's own balance sheet is so stuffed with um, bonds. I mean, they've been they've been doing QE since the year 2000. So that's 23 years of quantitative easing. They have accumulated an awful lot on their balance sheet. Their equity, I think, is something like um, 100 million yen or something. I mean, you know, which is peanuts compared with the losses that they've accumulated. Well, the Bank of Japan is in a really difficult situation. Now, I, I think inevitably it's going to blow. And what we've seen today is it's beginning to blow um, because having raised the, um, the guideline to half a percent either side of zero, which is the way they put it, um, uh, you know, it's now breached that level and it's going to go, it's just going to go shooting up even further. Um, I don't know what they can do to stop it. I don't think they can do anything to stop it. So you, we've got a crisis actually starting in Japan as we speak, as this video, which is what? We're Tuesday, the 28th of February at five o'clock in the evening UK time, midday your time. Um, so that I think is the most important development that we've seen certainly recently. And um, this has not a knock on effect because Put yourself in the position of Japanese banks where they have um, investments elsewhere. I mean, already they have um, been selling down their investments in French bonds. I mean, that was reported what, two, three weeks ago. And interestingly, the yield on 10-year um, French bonds is now nudging into new high ground. The yield on German bonds um, is now in high ground. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's broken above uh, previous highs. Uh, and uh, the yield on US Treasuries, UK gilts and all the rest of it are on the rise. So what we're seeing, I think, is um, another attack on financial asset values. Um, I mean, as to why it's rising, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, you know, we, we're talking ourselves into a recession. In fact, we're almost hoping for a recession because we think it might cure inflation. Well, good luck with that one. Um, meanwhile, the Chinese economy is recovering. Um, if you just look at the way money supply is increasing, you can see that credit is increasing in that economy. They've, um, they're reopening after their prolonged COVID shutdowns. Um, they're dealing with their property crisis. Um, and they're dealing with it, I think, quite constructively. Um, and they've got enormous prospects for investment all the way around Asia. And the great thing about um, the 
Chinese economy is they've got the savings to back it. I mean, the, the savings rate in Japan is an unbelievable 40 plus percent. I, you know, it just means that the capital is available out of the banking system to invest in projects all around Asia. I mean, this is this is the basis of the deal with the Saudis, for example. Um, you know, Saudis will sell oil to uh, uh, China and accept payment in renminbi. We know that, that this is uh, dealing a mortal blow, if you like, against the petrodollar. Um, or it'll turn out over time to be a mortal blow. Of that we can be sure. Um, but what the Chinese are doing is uh, they're looking at importing, I think, around about 61, 62 billion dollars worth of oil um, from Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, they're looking to invest about 60 billion of that back in various infrastructure developments, projects and all the rest of it. So, you know, that's the way this is going. They have got the savings in their banking system to be able to do it because the citizens are saving some unbelievable amount, like 40% of everything they earn. Could you clarify for me, we were talking about Japan and then just the last minute or so you've been talking about China. Yeah, the link is, the link is that the Chinese economy is beginning to boom at the same time we're going to the toilet. What this does to the commodity prices is it drives them up. And I think analysts are beginning to see that you're not going to get the um, you know, what they would normally expect a recession to do, to reduce demand for commodities, to reduce demand for manufactured goods, to reduce demand for consumer goods, while the consumer's sort of getting unemployed. I mean, this is this is the Keynesian view of what a recession is. It It is, a, if you like, a product or a commodity glut. The commodity glut is not going to happen. That's the first thing. The second thing is that when it comes to the product gl glut, that's not going to happen either. Why? because the people who produce stuff basically are going to go out, you know, they're going to lose their jobs. In other words, you know, production is going to go down as well as consumption. So um, this is a point that Keynesian economists get consistently wrong. I mean, they believe that you can get a general glut. You cannot get a general glut. You can get gluts 